Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Right, so um, this is a bit of a sort of off the cuff interim video, if you like, in between some other stuff I'm doing. I am making videos, believe it or not, and uh, we've got a lot going on. So I get asked a lot of questions, as I've told you in previous times. I get lots and lots of emails and stuff, and quite often it's too many to answer. So if your emails don't get answered, I'm sorry, but you know I can't spend all day answering emails. Um, the best way to do is, is comment in the video, below the videos, and then some other people will sometimes answer your questions for you as well. So, the most common question I get, and, and this question that I'm dealing with today has been asked in the comments below, so it just shows I do read them and I do respond. If, if I see it's of value, I'll make a video about it. Um, but by far the most questions I get are around these things. And this is what's known as an airbrush. Okay, as I'm sure you all know, this is an Iwata Revolution BR, and this airbrush is, I'll just say it's over 10 years old, I think it's actually about 11 years old, I'm not sure. Uh, I have never replaced a single part in it. Um, I do, I blow back through, which people say you shouldn't do. I pull the needle out through the back, which people say you shouldn't do. I mix in the cup, which people say you shouldn't do. Um, I do everything with this airbrush that people say you shouldn't do. But this here is living proof that you can, so say, abuse your airbrush, as some people put it, and it doesn't affect them at all. Um, the reason people say you shouldn't blow back, and I'm going to go, this is going to be really based for beginners as well as, as dealing with this issue. But people, the reason people say you shouldn't blow back is because when you do this, okay, what you're basically doing is forcing air back out through the cup. And what it does, it helps to clear any blockages you've got in your needle. And it also, it, um, it can help to mix your paint. So if you've just mixed some paint up, just blow it back through. For instance, I always put thinners in first. I never mix my paint outside. I mix, well, generally, if I'm doing a small amount, I'll mix the paint in the cup, which again, people say you shouldn't do. Um, I'll put thinners in first. So therefore, the area there, which is surrounded by the needle, okay, or the area surrounding the needle, should I say, will be thinners. And then when you put the paint in on top, it won't mix. So if you put your finger over the end and blow, okay, what you're doing is blowing air back up through there and it's mixing that thinners in with the paint. Now, if you don't know what an airbrush consists of, okay, this is the, this is the air, I, I, I'm not sure the correct terminology, I call this the air cap. And if you look down in there, you will see there's a hole, okay? And that hole surrounds the nozzle. Let's take this off the back. Okay, so that surrounds the nozzle and on the end of there is the nozzle and the nozzle unscrews. Okay, so basically what happens is the air is coming out of that hole in the bottom there, filling up this area and then it's being forced past that nozzle through that hole in that cap. And what's happening then is because the air is being forced past in like a venturi if you like, the pressure difference where the air is rushing past the nozzle will pull the paint through. Now the needle, as you can see, has a point on the end. They are very, so it's also very dirty. The needle is very, very sharp, okay? And that will actually, that goes into the nozzle. And then what happens is as you pull the needle back, as you pull that needle back, it opens up the orifice around the paint and allows more paint to go through. So obviously when you push down, this is a double action airbrush. When you push down, that's just there. When you pull back, it applies paint. So that would be very little paint and that would be all the way back. And you can see what's happening. It's pulling, as I pull it, it's pulling the needle back. Now the reason people say you shouldn't put your finger over the end and blow is because you're damaging the seals inside. That's rubbish. Um, basically, the what's happening is the air is coming out. You've got this little end cap on here, which I can never get undone. But um, basically what's happening is the air is coming out through that hole around the needle filling up this area in front of the needle here and then when you put your finger over it it has nowhere to go but back up the needle so you put the air on and back and it's pushing the the air back up and then into the paint pot there are no seals in there there is nothing under any pressure you're not damaging anything so there are a lot of people with a lot of opinions about airbrushes and they treat them like they're medical implements and it's really not necessary they, they're not that fragile um and they're also very, very simple. So basically, doing that is absolutely fine. 
Second one, mixing in the paint pot. People say you should never do it. I don't see why not. Um, you know, why are you going to keep dirtying paint pots and mi or mixing? I've seen people use little plastic shot glasses for mixing paint and they'll mix a tiny drop of paint, pour it in there and they throw the shot glass away. I've seen them use pipettes to pick the paint up and mix it and throw it away. You know, in this world of, of not throwing away plastics and stuff, I find that quite ridiculous. But, you know, I mix in the pot. Um, I'm, I must admit the first person I ever saw doing it was Phil Flory. And I thought, that's a good idea. Why not do that? And I've done it ever since. And I've done it ever since I've owned this airbrush. Um, you know, put a drop of thinners in there, put some paint in there, stir it till it looks about right. And then, you know, blow back through, mix up the last bit of paint and spray. That's how I've always done it. And unless I'm spraying like the bottom of a boat or something or, you know, a big tank or a, or a, a, a big aircraft or whatever, then I'll mix. And what I generally do then, I'll get some paint. And I'll, this is LP18, I'll dull red. And I'll say air. OK. Uh, and what I do is I mix the paint. I mix thinners into the paint when it's brand new. So I've then got a pot I can just pour out, spray, pour out, spray. Saves so you having to keep remixing. So that's the couple of do's and don'ts. The other thing people will say is never pull the needle out the back because what you're doing is pulling paint back through the seals. Well, as you can see, I haven't done a very good job of cleaning this last time I used it. It often happens, you, you, you're in the middle of doing something, but um, I can clean that off now. What I can do is get some of this Mr. Tool Cleaner, and even though that, that paint on there is dry, I can get a cotton bud into there, Mr. Tool Cleaner, and then wipe over there. And that will remove all of that paint. You can see that's clean now, clean as anything. So, basically what people say is you are damaging the seals because you're pulling paint back through your seals. Well, you've just seen what I've done there and I've still got friction on my seal. There's a seal in the back here, little um, PTFE seal, and that's what stops the paint running back down into here. Well, as I say, this airbrush is 11 years old or it's, te it's 10 years or more, let's put it that way. Um, so let's just say that, uh, yeah, 10 years old or more, I've never replaced any seals. I've never had any problems with paint getting back here. And I've used some very, very thin paint in this airbrush. And I'm going to use some very, very thin paint now. So, you know, don't listen to what a lot of people. Some people say you should never put the air, air needle through the back. What you should do is come along, remove your nozzle, okay, and push the needle through the front. Well, I'm afraid I would rather have to replace a Tuppence Hakeney uh, PTFE seal than have to replace a £50 nozzle, okay, because on there is a little thread, and if you keep taking that in and out, the only thing you can do is wear the thread out, um, and if you wear the thread out in the body of the airbrush, then you've got to get a new airbrush, basically. So I would rather leave that in there and pull this back and risk damaging that seal at the back, okay? So another thing they say is when you put it through that way, you're going to damage the front of the needle. Well, sorry, but... You know, like I say, 10 years plus of doing that, absolutely fine. So, um, yeah. So this is all just my opinion. Um, if you want to believe what others say and go down the road that they tell you to go down, that's absolutely fine. No issue with that whatsoever. I'm just telling you what I do and, you know, how I use my airbrushes. and I give them a hard time. Um, I've seen a lot of modelers give their airbrushes a hard time. And they get perfect results. Uh, you know, I, I've used very, very expensive, you know, stuff that can measure down to a micron um, in engineering. And to me, that's a precision instrument. This is not a precision instrument. So don't worry about it. Right. So that's the uh, whys and wherefores. If you, wonder, if you wonder what this is, this is a quick release. It's so that I can just change over because I have this one here. And then over here, I have my Bart Sharp airbrush. This is a great bit of kit for 50 quid. You get the airbrush, you get three different size cups, you get three different size nozzles, three different size needles, and it's bloody brilliant. And I use it for big stuff because in here we've got a 0.5 needle and nozzle. In here is a 0.3. So if you've got some thick paint, like you've got these things here, when they get a bit older, they tend to thicken up and you need a bigger nozzle to get them to go through. So um, 
that's what this is really really good for but for 50 pound i mean the price of that with the quick disconnects the air hose the three needles the three nozzles the three cups um and a, and a moisture trap as well is the price of just that need that nozzle on this so you know you pays your money you take your choice another question i get asked all the time about airbrushes is what do you recommend is the best for a starter i recommend the best you can afford um if you can afford this for about i don't know 110 120 pound whatever they are um if you can afford it get that okay because this is made to a price this is made to a quality and the quality of this is obviously much better than this now this is perfectly usable no issue whatsoever but it's got like rubber seals in it whereas this hasn't um it's going to last this is going to last longer than this it's going to be better quality from the outset obviously because it's quality it's not made to a price um having said that if you can't afford that then this at 50 pound is an absolute bargain i've seen airbrushes on amazon for like 10 or 12 pounds um i've seen these ones that come with a rechargeable canister thing i don't know I haven't tried them I don't want to but um basically I've used this on big stuff and it's absolutely great but basically quality wise this is the better airbrush so a gentleman called Casey Raymond has asked me the question can I spray Tamiya LP paints over Tamiya XF paints that's a good question I thought let's do a trial and make a video about it at the same time I can incorporate some starters bits and pieces for the airbrush so he has done his Bismarck in XF80 his superstructure and he's seen me do my turret in LP34 and as you can see there is a slight difference in the color and this is far more accurate I believe for Bismarck than this so he's asked if he can spray this over that now I mentioned to him why don't you just strip the paint off to start again because he's already done all his stripes you know the black and white stripes on the um on the camo so he wants to basically mask it off and start again. So I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll try it out. And I asked him what thinners he used. So what he's done, he sprayed XF80 using Tamiya X20A thinners. Okay. And he wants to go over with LP34 using Tamiya lacquer thinners. And he wants to know, will it affect it? Now, he seems to think it's going to crack. What happens is the, the paint underneath can't sustain the... The, the, the shrinking or, or the um, the tightening of the paint above and what it does it just cracks now the reason I want to try it is that can be used to affect if you want to do a, um, a sort of burnt out tank and part of the tank has still got paint on it you could do it in that effect to make the paint all look burnt and melted like it's cracked up uh, if you want to do like a really old cracked up leather seat in a car you could use that so we're going to see if it does crack and if it does then we've got a technique for making stuff look old weathered whatever so i've got here my old wing and this is an old he hunker 111 wing so i'm going to do it on here on the bare plastic not on the gray here that I, this is where i did some experiment with that um with those masking templates you can see it's quite a nice effect for a for a tornado or a tomcat or something so what i'm going to do first of all is spray some xf80 onto here using tamiya acrylic thinners and then we'll let it dry so I'll just take the lid off of here and I think what I might do is give this a stir because it's probably yeah we've got as you can see we've got lots of sludge in the bottom so I'm going to give it a stir rather than just rely on shaking as we can see it's quite thick which leads me to my next thing people say how much thinner should I put in Some people say go 50-50. Okay, go 50-50, that's great. Some people say thin it to the consistency of milk. Okay, great. Neither works. Okay, now it depends what you think milk is. If you look at this paint, you can see it's it's thinned down a bit now where I've stirred it all. But that is probably a lot thicker than it was when it was new. So therefore, if I'm used to thinning this paint 50-50 when it's new, when I pick a pot up that's been sat on the shelf for two years, like this has, then basically, you know, 50-50 ain't going to do it. Because 
it's too, it's going to be too thick. And I'm going to show you what how we deal with this with the hairbrush. So I always do what looks right, and I'm going to show you how I judge what looks right. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a mix that's too thick. As I say, we always use the thinners first. So what I'm going to do is just get a drop of thinners in my pipette. Drop that in there. As you can see, I've got a little puddle of thinners in there. It's nothing much. Okay. In fact, I'm going to take some of that thinners out because we're going to make it too thick. I'm going to make a thick mix. I'm going to show you what happens. The airbrush is set to about 18 PSI, which is a great starting point for whatever you're doing. Now, this is how I get the paint from the pot into the airbrush. Just like that. On the brush, squeeze it onto the side. And then give it a stir in there. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is pull the paint up the side of the cup. And you can see how it runs down see that it runs away quite easily so that's showing me that that paint is probably okay so I'm going to thicken it up I'm going to put too much paint in there make it too thick so you can see now when I brush that up there now it's kind of staying up the side so we'll get some more in there So there we are. So that's that's that done. I think that's probably too thick. Like I said, I'm going to put my finger over the end of the nozzle. nozzle just blow back. And what that does, that pushes the thinners that's down around the needle up into the paint. And do it again. That gives it a little mix. It's all mixed up now. You've got that bubble on the surface. Just punch it out. The other thing I like to do is have a piece of paper handy. He says has a piece of paper handy. And he doesn't have a piece of paper handy just to do a quick test on so what I'm gonna do is with my piece of paper and as you can see I'm pulling that as watch what my finger is doing here rather than watching on the paper you can see I'm pulling back quite far and there's hardly anything coming out and that is showing me the paint is too thick now if I pull right back you can see I've got paint coming out, but already you can see on there it's got like a texture to it. The paint is way too thick. And you can also see, every time I push my finger down on the nozzle, if you watch what happens if I go to the other side, when I start painting it spatters, watch. See that spatter on there? That's what you want to try and avoid. Spatter, bang, there you go. Spatter, spatter, bang. The way to avoid that, and one of my watchers told me this, okay, sometimes it's an indication that your paint is a little thick, but the other thing is, when you're airbrushing, watch what my finger does. Okay, I'm gonna be down with the air, pull back, do some painting, and then let go. And what happens is the paint that's on the nozzle is just stuck there. When I next spray, I get the spatter. So the way to do it correctly is this, down, back, forward, up, and then you won't get any spatter. Down, back, forward, up, no spatter. Okay, so that's a technique you want to get into. Rather than doing like that, down, back, forward, up. So we can see there the paint is too thick, it's rough as old boots. So what I'm going to do is add some more thinners to it. So we'll put the lid back on the paint here. We'll get some of our X20 thinners. Grab the pipette and just add, add a drop more thinners to it. As you can see, there's no science to it. I'm not weighing anything, I'm not measuring anything. I'm just doing it so that it kind of looks right. And then again, pull it up the cup and I can see that it's running down quite nicely. That's perhaps a still a little on the thick side. Sometimes you, won't, you don't want to do that to your benefit. 
you can sometimes spray the paint neat out the jar if you want to get a bit of a texture get a bit of a rough texture on it so say you're doing a you know a black cockpit a black cockpit side you want to add a bit of texture so that when you dry brush it you can just make it look a bit more sort of 3d than just a blank canvas Again, I'm going to blow through, so that will now blow the paint up into the thinned paint. And now you'll see the difference. When I start painting, watch how far my fingers comes back before the paint starts coming out. There we go. And that is so much better. You can see it's flowing out. So what I'm going to do now is paint this. So I'm going to paint this area of wing here with this XF80 and then we're going to leave it for half an hour and then we're going to paint over it with LP and see what happens. So when we paint there are two different ways of doing this. Um, if you watch some car modelers they will come back like this far and they will spray like this. And they'll go in kind of circular motions and spray the whole area. Just like, I guess it's not the best colour to show you, is it? But basically, they'll come down and do that. Okay. The other thing you can do is spray it like you would spray a car. Just keep your finger on the nozzle and then go in opposite directions, just like so. Or you can go like this. There is absolutely no point. Just keep the airbrush going and spray it on. Now, if I come up to this area here so you can see better what I'm doing. As you can see, come along. I'm just fading the paint on. I'm not trying to flood it on. I'm just trying to build up some colour. come along and go that way that is not a good thing to do because you'll generally get a heavy build up here because you're going up and down so you're doing you're sort of as you go up and down you're doing this hop area twice and we're out of paint now there we go so we've got that now painted gray you can see how that's gone down it's covered well and it's uh it's good to go so that is our experiment the other thing you can do if you want to dry your paint faster Come with your airbrush, and just blow air on it and it will help it dry faster. So I'm going to leave that now for a little while to dry and then I'm going to come back, I'm going to clean the airbrush out and then I'm going to come back and, um, and we'll do some more. Now as far as cleaning the airbrush goes, I tend to use Mr. Colour Rapid Thinners because it's a very hot thinner and it will really, really clean the brush out. You can get these airbrush airbrushing stations, which are great. I always put a cloth in the bottom of mine so it soaks up anything that goes in. But what I've started doing recently, I've got an empty bottle of Rapid Thinners. What I'm doing is, I would normally do this in my booth, okay? So would, I'd have the fan on, extracted the fumes. So I'm going to take some of the Rapid Thinners into my airbrush. Just like so. And then I'm going to use the same brush as I used to get the paint in, therefore cleaning the brush out as well as the actual airbrush itself. Brush around inside there, clean all that out. Okay, so now we've got a very thin mix in there. And then literally I'm going to put my fingers over the nozzle over here and blow that thinners into that old plop pot. And the reason I do that, I now have crustings. I now have a pot of dirty thinners that is really good if you want to wash out an old pot, or if I wanted to wash this out, or if I had a, you know, if I had a mishap and this was all caked and full of gunked up Mr. Um, Vallejo paint or, or AK or whatever. Like sometimes it goes like cottage cheese if you mix the wrong thinners. It's great for that sort of thing. I wouldn't necessarily put it through this airbrush all the time, but if it was all clogged up with something, then it's great for doing that. 
So I'm managing to reuse the thinners rather than just throw it away. Now the next thing I'll do now is come along and get another drop of the thinners in there, like so. Okay, once again, brush it around. Finger over the end, blow back through. And then once again, Move that into there and that's it the other thing i do quite often and people will go <gasps> like that is i will get a cotton bud and just go around the inside of there in fact i will get the cotton bud and i will wet it with some thinners and i will just go around the inside of the nozzle just to clean out any paint that's in there whatever a lot of people will say oh my god you shouldn't do that but hey so again I've been doing it for years obviously I'm not pushing I'm just letting it float, float around in there and it's because you get paint on the walls of the sides there the other question I get is how often do you strip your airbrush down to clean it the answer is very rarely um, I will generally I mean if I look at the inside of this now I didn't take the needle out or anything did I I will generally take the needle out after every use you can see here it's clean and I'll just wipe a thinner soaked cotton bud over it which I obviously didn't do last time I used it because I still had green paint on there and then just pop that back in okay um, and that's it job done now you can sort of see things build up um, if you if you look inside there you can see you might get some paint build up in nooks and crannies and stuff and then it's time for a for a deep clean and what I will often do is get some, you know, like a, an old Tamiya jar, clean, clean one. And I'll put all the little bits and pieces in there and soak them in this Mr. Tool Cleaner, which is absolutely bloody awesome stuff. Um, and that'll get anything off of it. And that's it, job done. The other thing I'll sometimes do if, you know, it might be every sort of five times, I'll come along. Yes, I use the same pipette for everything, and I don't have an issue with that either. There we go. And I'll put that in there and just let that sit. Brush it around, because this will literally remove anything. Like that. Blow it back through. Okay, the... <laughs> I left the screw loose in there. So basically, I put my finger over the end, blow that back through. And you can see here, I don't know if you're going to be able to make it out, but in the airbrush there, just by the end of the bristles, there's a little lump. And you can see that little lump. That's a little piece of dried paint from something previous. So you can see this Mr. Tool Cleaner is really, really sorting things out. So now and again, I'll put that through. And then once I just I can just blow that into here, blow that into there, and that's gone. And that gives the airbrush a proper little clean out inside. And then I can just run around the cup. Just like so. And there we are. Um, now, as I say, this is everything the way I do it. This is not how you might want to do it. There's a million ways to skin a cat, um, but this is how I do it and how I go about things. And for me, it works. Uh, another question I got asked the other day was how, how hard should you push the needle into the nozzle? Right. If you put it in quite hard, you will find it sort of locks in there. So what you want to do is just push it in to just gently sit up against it. Okay. And that's like that. Now a little test you can do, so grab a drop of this lacquer thinners to test the condition of your needle slash nozzle. Just put a drop of thinners in there, just like so. Put your finger over the end of the airbrush and push down. As you can see, we've got a tiny few bubbles coming up. See, they've got bubbles coming up with the actual needle pushed up and without being pulled back there should be no air coming out so what I'm going to do is just get the needle 
push it into the nozzle and give it a twist. Because if there's a tiny bit of debris or something, a bit of old paint, with that thinners in there, this will get it out. Okay, so you can tighten that up now. You can see now when I push down, I've got no air at all coming out. Oh, there is a tiny little bubble now and again. And then when I pull back, you can see the air comes out. So that's how to check. If when you're when you're spraying, nothing's coming out, okay, and you've cleaned your air breath and still nothing is coming out, you've either got one of two things. You've got a blockage in the actual nozzle itself. Right, so you think you're putting the needle in, but you're not. You're just coming up to a, a blockage, blockage of paint. So the thing to do is take the nozzle out, blow it through. What I often do is get a paintbrush and use the paintbrush and, with thinners and push the paintbrush into the back of the nozzle and clean it out. Uh, you could stick it in the end of a pipette and then just blow th thinners through it uh, to clean it out. Leave it soaking in something really hot. If you don't have any of this, okay, and you want to soak like your nozzle, Soak it in this. Get some of that into a jar, soak it in that. That'll dissolve anything that's in there as well. Um, but basically, if you've got nothing coming out when you spray, you've either got a block nozzle or this hole here, that hole in there, as I talked about earlier, if that's, co if that's co uh, soaked up in paint, and it's not leaving any air around the nozzle, there's no paint coming out. So what you do then is you get a cocktail stick. Okay, you might want to dip it in some thinners. And then just get the cocktail stick and gently push that into there. You can see I've got some paint on there, but it's not perfectly clean. Just gently push it, and don't go pushing it in hard or anything. And just give that area a clean out. And then you should find that it starts spraying. There we go. So basically, if your airbrush stops working, there's really only two, well, there's three things. The paint's too thick. Okay, that's that's going to be pretty obvious for you. Um, or your, no, your nozzle's blocked, or that hole around the nozzle is blocked uh, with paint, and then no air is coming out. And generally, you'll hear it because it'll sound odd. It, it, it doesn't sort of have that, that whooshing air sound as it should have, with um, you know, with the air coming out the front. So there you are. There's another way actually if you if you if you put your finger over the end if you if you put your hand in front of it you should feel air coming out of there if you feel no air coming out of there then you know that nozzle's blocked all right so there we go so we'll put this cap back on and there's the airbrush clean as i say i clean mine probably once every couple of months clean it properly you know let it soak and everything but um the other thing is i only generally tend to use lacquer paints even if i use these i generally thin them with uh, Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners. So everything I'm doing is always lacquer paints. Lacquer paints look after your airbrush a lot better than your likes of Viejo and everything. They will tend to clog up and congeal and you know that MIG one shot primer, which is basically um, Steinle Res, that stuff will really clog your airbrush up if you try and introduce any odd thinners to that. So um, yeah, be really careful with using that. So anyway, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna leave, let this dry and um, Still, as you can see, it's still wet, it's still got a sheen to it. We're going to let that dry, dry off properly, and then we're going to see if we can put some Tamiya lacquer paint over the top of it. Right, here we are, seven hours later, and we can see that Tamiya XF80 is all nice and dry. Remember, I put that on Tamiya XF80 with X20A thinners. So the question was, will this, will the LP paints thinned with lacquer thinner attack that paint? So that's going to be the test. Now I've already got LP34 here for my Bismarck turret, which as you can see I've done air, I've thinned it, but I've used Mr. Color Leveling Thinners. And basically the gentleman, I can't remember his name now, I'm sorry, the gentleman that asked me to do this, well asked this question, uh, has basically said he's going to use the Tamiya Lacquer Thinners. Now I've got the retarder type, I can't see there's any difference. Um, this one just dries a bit slower so it allows the paint to settle out, especially in warm weather. Um, if it's a really hot area where you are, I would definitely recommend this. 
so you'll get a nice smooth surface. So what we're going to do is same as we did before, we are going to leave the air pressure the same in the airbrush. The airbrush is all sort of clean-ish from when we did our um, quick clean out seven hours ago. So I'm going to put some thinners in here. So put a drop of thinners in there. Now with Tammy LP paints, I find, I mean, I love them, but there's one thing I don't like about them. When you thin them, you saw me earlier adding the XFAT to thicken it up and then I add more thinners to thin it down and you can kind of play with it and, you know, whatever you do, you can go 70, 80 percent thinners and it'll still spray fine. Um, and it just you just have to build it up slowly. With the Tamiya lacquer paints, I find they tend to. I won't be able to show you because it's it, it's it's so difficult to recreate, but you kind of thin them and you you keep adding thinner. And then, you know, they're too thick and all of a sudden whoosh, they're like water. So it's 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 a very, very sort of touchy kind of subject. And I've already given this a good stir to get the sediment out of the bottom. So I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to make quite a thin mix. It's going to be like 70 percent thinners because I find that with any paint, any paint at all, I like to spray it when it's really thinned. I'd rather build it up in thin layers. You can see here, I come up under the light, you can see here, I'll drag the paint up and you can see it's running down and it's literally like water. Um, and that is how I like it. Um, because then you can lay it down and you can build it up. Of course, the trouble with that is it's going to take longer to dry because it has more thinners in it. You have to build it up. So that's a shame. Uh, but also the good thing for this test is it's going to be a lot hotter because it's more thinner than paint and the thinner is the hot side of things. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do this section here initially. Thinner's on my finger. Just going to do this section here initially down to this panel line. I'm going to see what happens and I'm going to go along here as well because this has got, um, this will be LP paints here thinned with Mr. Kyle Levin thinners. So we'll see what happens there. So I'm going to do this area here and this area here up to that panel line. So we'll just check our flow, get a piece of paper. So as you can see, it's coming through and it is heavily thinned, which is good for this test because it will make sure that if anything's going to happen, it's going to happen. So what I'm going to do is just lightly spray this on here. And as I say, you need to be doing this in a ventilated area with a mask, with your extraction going, which is exactly the opposite of what I'm doing. Now I'm going to lay this down quite heavy so that we can see what actually happens. And as you can see, it looks absolutely fine. So I'm going to do this area here. Just got the lack of thinners underneath the XF80 just to see if anything happens there. And it looks like we're okay. Now what I'm going to do here, in this band here, I'm going to go really heavy. I'm going to flood it on. You can see that I really flooded it on. I've really built that up. You can see on there. How much gloss there is so that is like really and you can see how it's leveling out I mean it's even filled in those those rivets you can see how thick it is I've done that on purpose to see if it attacks it we we'll do the same here and there we go so we've got this in fact we'll do some here as well we'll do this area here really heavy and that's it, we're out of paint. So you can see I've gone really heavy there. I've gone really heavy across there. I've gone really heavy there. And you know, it looks like we're okay. It looks like nothing's happening. You can see how heavy the paint is. You can see how glossy it is, how the rivet detail's gone and everything. I've really, really plastered it on. So if, that, if anything's going to attack it, that will because it's heavy. So we'll leave that for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, see what happens, and I'll come back and show you. Okay, so there you go, about 15 minutes later, and as we can see, it's starting to dry off, and there are no issues with it 
whatsoever. You can see this is where it went really heavy. This is where I sprayed it normally. <clears throat> you can see 15 minutes, I can rub my finger over it. It's absolutely fine. Um, we can also see the massive colour difference between the LP34 and the XF80. So I can see why Casey wants to change. And yeah, it looks like you're safe to do so, mate. Um, you know, do a test first. Don't take my final word for it. But what I've done here, that's XF80 on bare plastic, thin with Tamiya X20A. And then seven hours later, I've gone LP34 with Tamiya lacquer thinners. And as you can see, I've sprayed it normally here. I've sprayed it normally here. That's on bare plastic. That's on a, a paint um, underneath. And there's no difference. Um, and then here, I've gone really heavy and plastered it on. As you can see, it's still wet. I could probably leave a finger mark in it. In fact, I will, because it doesn't matter. Yeah, as you can see, I leave a finger mark in it. But it's not lifting off or anything. So... I would say carry on, get get on with it, so it's going to be absolutely fine. So now we know that we can use LP paints over XF paints thinned with XF, with X20A thinners with no problem. If anything, these little black, you can see these black spots here, I think, I think they are the remnants of decals, I think. But if anything, it's attacked that, but um, it certainly hasn't attacked the x 20 the, uh, the the XF80 with the X20 thinners, so go for it. It's going to be fine. You can see that I'm, I'm... If it was going to be lifting what's underneath, I would expect that, as I put my finger on it, I would expect it to lift. It's just the seams cracking. Um, I would expect that to lift that paint and lift what's underneath, but it's not. It's not lifting anything. Look, my fingers are unmarked. So go for it. It's going to be absolutely fine. So there we are. Um, I just want to finish up by saying, you know, the beginning section of this video, um, you know, I was talking about what I do with airbrushes, what I found, what I think you should do, what I think you shouldn't do, blah, 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 blah. That is all totally my opinion. And it's what I've been doing for years and years and years. And you have seen me using my airbrush, which is 10 plus years old without having a single part replaced. And it's absolutely fine. So you've seen my modeling. A lot of you comment about the quality of my modeling. You know, um, there are people out there that are going to be absolutely pulling their hair out. At some of the things I do. And, and that's absolutely fine. You know, if that's what you want to do, then fine. Um, I am not a drop counter. You know, I think drop counting is a complete and a waste of time because paint thickens with age. Um, and also, if you didn't quite, you know, if you think about it, if you're going to go six drops of thinners to four parts of paint, four drops of paint religiously, and you haven't quite shaken that bottle enough, then you've now got like three drops of paint to six drops of thinners, you know, or if when you did the original test, you didn't quite shake it enough, you might be going too thick. You know, it's, um, and then you've got people that do it by weight, which is absolutely fine. As long as you know the specific gravity of all the different thinners and all the different paints, because, you know, this might have a different specific gravity to green. Who knows? Um, so, you know, the, the actual ratio then by weight is going to change. Um, and as for mixing in the pot, you know, I, I don't want to be having to clean out glass jars that I've mixed paint in all the time because it's just a waste of paint it's a waste of thinners and it's a waste of time and it's a waste of paper towel um, I don't want to be using plastic pots because I use that lacquer thinners and it attacks them and you end up with molten plastic in your paint uh, so you know I mix it in the airbrush because I can and if I'm spraying something like when I do that 30 second scale Lancaster I will have my paints I will use LP paints and I will pre-thin them as I said, in the jar, pour them in the airbrush, bang them on, job done. And then when it comes to weathering and detail stuff, I will be using all sorts of different stuff like that. So that's basically the way I do it. You don't have to do it the way I do it. But the way I've done it is the way it's worked for me. So if it clearly would sort of relate to the fact that if you do the same as me, it should work the same for you. If you use the same paint, same airbrush, same thinners, then surely it's going to be the same, isn't it? Anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you got a lot from it. As I say, any questions, comments down below. Um, 
and I'll see you all soon for another video. Bye for now.